Hey everyone, uh, we've recently been getting a lot of questions about how we bought a house in Europe and got it shipped over the ocean to Canada. And so we already have a video about this whole process, but it's been buried in our channel. And so we want to reshare with you uh, with some added information. Now, we didn't want to modify the video that we've already made because there's a lot of really helpful information in there about the process involved in ordering the kit, getting it sent across the ocean. And so uh, we left the original video as it is. Uh, I want to encourage you to stick around to the end of the video where we talk about how the process and some of the pricing has actually changed. There's Rob out there. He's so happy. It's the first time he's using it all. You can't see him through the screen. All right, it's, it's here. It's an hour and a half early, but the shipping container has, has arrived and it's time to start unloading it here. Um, I'm pumped. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Canadian A, where today we are gonna be talking all about our shipping containers arriving. So uh, both of them are now arrived, have now arrived, and so we are going to be showing you a bit of footage. You've already seen some of both of the containers arriving, and uh, we're gonna be talking about the process, some of the hiccups and the complications, um, even with two big uh, pieces of machinery. I'll be talking about that. <laughs> <laughs> and um, then at the end, I'm going to be breaking down the cost and um, just how much it costs to ship the containers as well as duties and taxes, etc. Yeah. And so I think we have a better idea of uh, yeah, what's involved. So uh, without further ado, Rob. Mm -hmm. So first thing we want to talk about is equipment. So we had two, there were two 20 foot shipping containers that got, uh, well, they, they came to our end of our driveway. Uh, they didn't leave the containers. We had to unload them on site. And we were given two hours to unload the containers before extra charges started to kick in. And so we were, uh, it was suggested that we have two pieces of heavy equipment on site. And so we had actually set up a rental for a telehandler uh, that was gonna be able to reach inside the containers to drag stuff out. And then our neighbor has a backhoe with forks on it. And so we asked him if he could give us a hand. He said, yes. So. We had the telehandler all lined up and ready to go. And two days before the telehandler was supposed to get dropped off, a friend of ours let us know that they had a telehandler sitting around that they weren't using. And so we actually got that thing floated up uh, for less cost than the cost to actually rent the telehandler from mm -hmm. the local company. And so we saved a bunch of money and now we actually just have it sitting on site, which has been really helpful Mm -hmm. uh, for that as well. So we had a telehandler on site as well as our neighbor's backhoe and what we were doing to uh, unload is well a whole bunch of stuff. Like there were some times where we had to like wrap chains around a load of uh, the supplies and like drag it out a little bit while the other machine put its forks underneath and then the other machine while it was supporting it would then drag it back and there was a lot of like going back and forth and you hold this I hold that and did you have to separate um, like if things were stacked really yeah. high, did you have to take the top one out? Yeah, so we'll actually, we'll put up a picture of how the container was, was sent. Uh, we were given like a, a 3D image of what it looked like. This is the first one here. And so you can see there's two different positions. And then um, this is the second one you'll see right now. And so you can see the two different viewpoints there as well. Yeah. And so there was a lot of containers or a lot of, a lot of parts of the container where we would slide out a whole section and then lift off the top layer. And then sometimes there was even three layers uh, stacked where we'd have to lift off piece by piece. Uh, and then I would drive them into our driveway, set them down and then just keep going. Uh, I think both containers took us four hours mm -hmm. um, yeah. to do. So we did go over on the time allowance, but we didn't have to unload any, uh, any pieces of the, the packaging, which we were told to expect. We were, we were told to anticipate not being able to unload everything and then we'd have to unpack some stuff, but we didn't have to, which was really great. So we pulled everything out of the containers, set it down in the driveway right off the house. And then after the truck was gone, I then spent a few hours 
driving each load one by one up our driveway to the actual site of our house we're building. So for the timeline of the day, both times it was about two hours um, that we were allotted, but we actually both times went about four hours mm -hmm. of actually having the truck there. And the first truck was uh, sent directly from Auburn. So what Auburn did, which we were really thankful for, was they said, listen, I know winter is coming. You guys want to get your house framed up as fast as possible. We will separate the materials based on what has to be built first. So first we got um, everything for the framing in the first container and then um, you'll see in the diagram. The first one was just like packed with like really good quality lumber. Yeah, it was like all of the trusses, all of the interior framing, all of the, the skylights from that, the house wrap, the, all the hardware, mm -hmm. all of that stuff. And so that one came directly to our door and then the second one, uh, it was suggested to us by the uh, Canadian rep that we would just order it to the port and then the trucks can actually access it immediately. So the second one we actually had uh, to the port and then we privately hired a truck to bring it here. So the first container actually, the guy, he kind of just was in his truck the whole time, um, not helping at all, but it was fine, we figured it out. The second one, we actually really needed help because the, what was it that was so heavy? It was all of the, the tongue group uh, pine that's going to go on the interior cladding and the exterior on the gable ends of the house. Mm -hmm. It was so heavy that the telehandler couldn't retract and even driving backwards, it was it wasn't possible. Mm -hmm. And so we actually, with the telehandler, just kind of lifted a little bit off the front and then the truck driver drove forward and that's how we got the the, the, the wood to the edge of the of the truck. And then we like we did that a few times and like I was, yeah. I was so pumped that that actually worked because we were thinking, okay, let's start unloading all the wood by hand, <laughs> which would have been horrible. But yeah, the, the truck driver was actually the one who had the suggestion, hey, why don't we try, try doing it this way? Yeah, so we were really thankful for that. So um, I will uh, be happy to give you that trucking info if you are shipping from, uh, from Europe and you need to figure it out in Canada, let me know and I will get you that company's name. Um, and then, so it's six weeks apart and the total time was four hours each time. And normally it's about $75 per each extra hour. The first one, they arrived early, so mm -hmm. we didn't have to pay that. But the second one, we actually did have to pay it, but it was kind of worth it because he was helping us. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's all about the timeline. And then I guess we can break down the expenses now. So for the expenses, the shipping company that Avram used is Hapag Lloyd, which is a pretty big international shipper. I don't even know if I'm saying that right. Like, why do they have such a weird name? It's probably two people's names. Well, okay, that's fair. I mean, that's true. <laughs> okay, well, anyways, it was them. And um, so we had the shipment to our door cost us, and all of these costs are in Canadian dollars. So um, just use your exchange calculator if you're somewhere else. But um, this, these numbers definitely are more accurate for Canadians because I think um, the American Avram has a completely different situation with where they get their supplies. So, um, so 14,429.33, exact numbers. Um, and that is for the shipping to our door from Half Egg Lloyd from Aubrey. And then the second container we did, it was 12,948 Canadian to the port. And then it was almost $2,000 from the port to our door. And then there was a few extra numbers in there. So it was around 15,000 actually. So it was a little bit more expensive to do it the second way, how we did the second container, but it arrived on the expected day, which yeah. is 
which was really important to us because we had already waited for the second or for the first one for mm -hmm. a few days. We actually, we had, we asked them to hold the second container because yeah. we weren't ready for it yet. So we said, can you just hold it in your warehouse yeah. for an extra day? Yeah, because all of the like moving the equipment up to the house site. Um, so just so that you understand the scenario here, we, we are currently living in the house that we sold. So I don't know if you remember in our previous video, we talked about um, the fact that we we own two separate parcels um, and then we sold the, fir the front one after we flipped it. And so thankfully it was kind of a miracle, but the guy who bought our house was willing to let us rent it while we're building, which is huge yeah. because um, first of all, where would we have even dropped the supplies? And then second of all, just like Rob will come home for lunch, he'll take the quad to work because we only have one vehicle. So he'll mm -hmm. take the quad to work or he'll walk to work. Yeah. And so it's been it's been so helpful, like invaluable. Yeah. Like I can't imagine if we didn't if we were living there, I, I can't imagine so, how we do this. And that wasn't even part of our plan. Our plan was to rent a cottage, but God knew we needed yeah. <laughs> to be able to rent this house. So that's where we are right now um, while we're building. And so um, all of the materials got dropped off at the house here. Um, and then we were porting them up the driveway. Yeah. And so, and the reason why we didn't go up the driveway was because it's a thousand foot driveway with two turns that would have been pretty tight, but more than that, there was no way that the semi pulling the trailer could do a, could do like a, a 25, a 30, or 40 point turn to get turn around if you could drive to the top. And so we knew that they, that, that wasn't going to be a possibility. We knew we'd have to unload it here and then cart everything up one at mm -hmm. a time. Okay, so back to the numbers. So the first one was uh, 14,429, so let's say 14,500. Second one was 15,000 just for shipping, to just ship those two 40-foot containers here. So we're looking at about 30,000 there. And then um, we had the Canadian representative of Avram arrange our duties. And the reason for that is because it could get up to the full 13 percent um, for the duties, taxes, and the handling. And so he was, um, because he's like a dealer, I think, or he worked with a dealer, or I don't know, there's some sort of negotiation factor in there, but because he's, they recognize him, they did it for 8%. So we paid him the 8%, which was really great. So it was 5,000 basically times two, so it was about $10,000. So the total for shipping, duties, taxes, and handling, was altogether thirty nine thousand six twenty two thirty, and that is taxes in. Um, well, I just said that, but it was also in the Canadian yeah. amount. It's because all the numbers for so much of this has all been in euro, and so like my brain's constantly going back and forth. Um, so yeah, so we are we are actually going to go into more of the financial details in another de in another video where we can break down like the total cost of the whole kit and then all of the additional things like the plumbing and electrical and stuff. And the whole project. Yeah, yeah, in another video. But just for this one, I wanted to be really clear about the actual cost because I think it's pretty easy to be like, oh, the house is gonna cost this much. And then we budgeted for the cost of the house pretty much. And then it was a bit of a surprise with everything added on, yeah. so. But yeah, it, it worked out really well and we were pleased with the process. And so um, we are really happy that everything is unloaded and it has gone up the driveway and we are ready to build. So that's how our kit got over here. And as I mentioned before, there are some things that have changed since we got our kit from Avrain. Uh, for starters, for all Trio 100 models and larger, ours is a Trio 120. Uh, just for, for reference, for all uh, Trio 100 models and higher, it comes in two shipping containers. And so for the price for that to Canada, it is averaging about $16,000 for shipping. For the smaller models, it's about $8,000, cutting that into half because there's only one container for the smaller models. That $16,000 price point is about half of what we ended up paying to get the same containers over here when we purchased our kit. So the, the first big difference is that the price of shipping has actually come down significantly. The second difference, if you're purchasing a kit in Canada, is that now you can actually make your payments and your transactions all in Canadian dollars. When we purchased our kit, we actually had to send wire transfers from our bank to, to Europe for them to receive it in euros. Uh, 
in that process, I can remember being at the bank and the bank manager had to be called and had to like talk me through the process to make sure that I was actually sending money to a legitimate company. Because when I told them that we were buying a house that was gonna get sent to me into shipping containers from Estonia, Europe, he looked really concerned and thought that I was gonna be getting scammed. I wasn't, <laughs> and he, once I showed him the website and the YouTube channel, uh, he was uh, confident that this was a legitimate transaction. All that to say, now uh, in Canada, you can make those transactions in Canadian dollars. Uh, so when you're making your payment, you're paying in Canadian dollars for the material, the, all of the lumber and the steel and the windows and all that stuff, and then the uh, applicable local taxes. One of the great benefits of that is that if you are building your own home, you can apply for the HST rebate uh, in Canada. We were unable to use the purchase of the building material for that because we paid it in euros and we didn't pay the local taxes, we paid the import and duty fees. So that's another benefit is that if you're going through this process and building your own home, you can actually claim that in your HST rebate. Well, that does it for today's video. Uh, thank you so much for sticking around to the end of it. And I wanna encourage you, uh, if you know someone who's thinking about building their own home, uh, send them this video. Uh, we feel that the price point, especially for the quality of the materials, was really, really good. Uh, so if, so you, if you know someone who's thinking about building their own home, send them this video and try to entice them to consider buying a really cool A-frame as well. Uh, but if you have any other questions about other parts of the builds uh, up until this point, uh, please include them in the comments below or send us an email to, we do have our email in the description and uh, we would love to hear from you and we'll get back to you as soon as we're able to. But that's enough for today. Have a great day 